Nobody wants to get united. Like, what we got to do is meet everybody in 149th Street at the bench. Guys, today we got to talk about something crazy in the graffiti world. What if you guys let me know that some, some, <laughs> some absolute champions decided to go ahead and paint this massive skyscraper over in California? I even pulled up a few articles here. So let's kind of go through this and see what's going on here. As I'm sure a lot of you guys know, as I'm sure a lot of you guys have seen, there's these towers over in Ocean Wide Plaza, where they have three different buildings that are currently in the process of being developed. And as they put it, over 27 floors have been tagged. Now, I don't know. <laughs> Look at that. This looks a little bit more than just 27. The 40-story towers are part of a development that was to include a hotel and luxury condos. But at this point, this entire development has been left unfinished after the project was stalled in 2019 due to the Chinese developer running out of money. So now you have these towers that have just been sitting there not doing anything since 2019. So what do you think is going to happen? You think? Do you honestly believe that graffiti artists are just going to see this golden opportunity and not take it? Obviously they are. And that's where two graffiti artists gave a little bit of a, a, of a quote, if you will, where they say, with all due respect, it's abandoned, doing nothing. Let's put some color on this and do what we do if they ain't gonna finish the job. Now, Aker chimes in and says, this building has needed love for years. If the owners aren't doing anything about it, then the streets of LA are happy to make something out of it. Now, what's really crazy is they caught multiple different graffiti artists and when they asked if the people in charge would like to press charges, they said no. So they had to just let the people go. This right here opens up the floodgates. If you're not gonna punish criminals for doing something, they're gonna go right back and do it. Now let's be real, most of the people hit in this building, I imagine they would continue doing graffiti even if they had gotten arrested. Most of them probably have already been arrested in the past. But when graffiti artists hear that nobody's getting in trouble or very few people are getting in trouble for hitting something, they're gonna go to the spot as well. That being said, apparently the law does have a plan in order to secure the area a little bit tighter. Now before we continue on with the story, I wanna let you guys know, today's video is sponsored by my own store. We recently published a how to do graffiti book that covers each one of graffiti's fundamentals in an insane amount of depth. If you're struggling to learn or you just want to increase your skill level overall and potentially even get out of the toy phase if you're newer, this is the book that will help you do that. Pick up the ebook in the description down below. We go over information that has never been talked about before in graffiti, but let's get back to the story. And you know what I love about this is the fact that people rock straight letters and pieces. You don't see throwies on here, not too much anyway. You don't see like just <laughs> a scared kid rocking a tag and then running away. What I also really, really appreciate here is nobody's really going over one another. You don't see a straight letter smack on top of another straight letter. You don't see a throwy smacked on top of somebody's, you know, piece here or a straight letter. Everybody's got their spot. Everybody's respecting of the spot, at least largely speaking, and it, it looks great. It looks amazing. Now, something else about this entire story is apparently a lot of artists were inspired by something that had happened over in Florida. In December 2023, the Art Basel show was held in Miami Beach. Because of the art show that was going on, a lot of graffiti artists came together and painted an abandoned healthcare building. The whole situation in Florida where they painted that building as well and it was well received shows us that people are keen on something like this. That the general populace, even though they may not like the super gritty side of graffiti, when it's something on this scale, when something presented in this way, the appeal is definitely there. I mean, we once again, we saw it in Florida and we all saw it with five points. And yes, you have that more underground side of graffiti, you know, that more gritty side of graffiti, but you also have this more artistic side of graffiti, which once again, the general populace is beginning nowadays to see the more artistic side of graffiti. And it's true, there is an innate artistic attribute to all graffiti. So I think the situation with Five Points and the situation with Florida shows that there is an appeal here. And it would be awesome if they preserved the building. It'd be awesome if they had that as like some kind of graffiti monument, but <laughs> albeit an extremely expensive monument, an unrealistically expensive monument. And once again, right, those are just in a perfect world, my hopes, my wishes for what would happen. But if we're being more realistic, what I think would happen is a developer with a lot of money is going to buy up the plot, demolish the entire thing, and build something else there. Especially if they're holding award ceremonies like <laughs> pretty much right next door, then they're going to want to build something profitable there. And they're not going to just let a building like this rock. I mean, even once again, the situation in Florida, same thing's already happening. As much as that building has been well received, they're demolishing that as well. And the same way they took five points away, I think the fate of this is pretty much sealed. They're going to end up knocking this down, or they're going to end up getting rid of all this and building something else else there. But if the building can't be preserved, if the building can't be memorialized, hopefully the legacy of this entire event can be immortalized in graffiti's history because th this is phenomenal. <laughs> this is amazing. I never advise that anybody go ahead and break the law. However, comma, that doesn't mean I can't enjoy it when I see it. Now, if any of you guys have hit this building, if, it, if I have anybody who went to this place and did something, share your pictures with me over
over on Instagram. Let me know your story. You can do it anonymously if you'd like, but I'd like to have a chat with you. I'd like to kind of get some, some more first-hand accounts, some more story behind the journey into this building. Pictures, video, the whole nine yards is welcome. You can email me. You can hit me up on Instagram. The floodgates are open. Now, dude, some of you guys have wanted me to begin doing interviews with different graffiti artists. Not exactly sure how we're going to do it. Not sure if I'm going to sit down and do a video chat with them or if we'll do something more text-based and throw it up on the site for you guys. But who would you like me to interview? Leave it in the comments down below. That pretty much brings us to today's video, guys. If you're looking to learn a lot more about graffiti, check out the ebook we published in the description down below. And we also have the best how to do graffiti tutorials anywhere online right up here with more graffiti content right down here. And I'll catch you guys back here next week. Thanks for watching.